Looking for a qualification that is proof of your ability to use English to communicate in simple situations? Well, listen up because today I'm talking about the A2 key, former Cambridge English cat. But before that, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that more people get to know the A2 key and other examinations. Now, let's go! Hello exam seekers, I'm Patty and today I'm talking about the A2 key, former cat. In a recent video, I talked about the Cambridge English Main Suite, which is a set of exams from Cambridge Assessment that provides proof of people's ability to use English in a wide variety of contexts relevant to work, study and leisure activities. It goes from the A2 to the C2 of the CEFR, the Common European Framework of Reference. I've already made a video about the C2 proficiency, the CPE, which is the highest level qualification that Cambridge can offer. I've talked about the C1 Advanced, the CAE, the second most difficult exam. I've talked about the B2 First, the FCE, the most popular exam from Cambridge English, and the B1 preliminary, the PAT, the first intermediate level exam. However, if you feel that your level of English is not yet intermediate and you want to show that you can deal with simple situations, maybe the CAT is the exam for you. So, in this video, I'm gonna tell you what the A2 key exam is, what it involves, how it is assessed and graded, how much it is and how to register for it. What is the A2 key? The A2 key, formerly known as CAT, Key English Test, is one of the Cambridge English proficiency exams. An A2 key qualification is proof of people's ability to use English to communicate in simple situations. This basic level qualification is a great exam to take if you're new to learning English. Candidates usually sit for this exam right after the Young Learners exams. There is no rule though. Once you have the requirements for one of the exams, you can take them in whichever order you prefer. However, this is the first real exam after the YLE. That means it is not a children's test anymore. You won't earn shields or take a colored exam or with colored pictures anymore. It is still one exam to give you the confidence to go on and study for higher level exams though. So it is lighter than B1 preliminary and the B2 first, but it takes the candidates more seriously than the YLE, the Young Learners exams. An A2 key certificate shows that you can understand and use basic phrases and expressions, understand simple written English, introduce yourself and answer basic questions about yourself. Also, interact with English speakers at a basic level. For those familiar with the CEFR table, this is the second level out of six. So, what does the A2 key involve? The A2 key exam is divided into three sections, reading and writing, listening and speaking. Each section is composed of different parts and each one carries different marks. Reading and writing consists of seven parts and has in total 32 questions. It is expected that you show that you can understand simple written information such as brochures, signs, newspapers, and magazines. You have up to one hour to finish the exam. It is 50% of your marks. Part 1. Multiple choice. Read six short real-world texts for the main message. Part 2. Multiple matching. Read seven questions and three short texts on the same topic. Then match the questions to the texts. Part 3. Multiple choice. 
Read one long text for detailed understanding and main ideas. Part 4. Multiple choice clothes. Read a factual text and choose the correct vocabulary items to complete the gaps. Part 5. Open clothes. Complete gaps in an email and sometimes the reply to using the one word. Part 6. Guided writing. Write a short email or note of 25 words or more. Part 7. Picture story. Write a short story of 35 words or more based on three pictures prompt. Listening consists of five parts and you need to answer 25 questions. It is expected that you show that you understand announcements and other spoken material when people speak reasonably slow. The tracks will be played twice before moving on to the following piece. The full recording takes approximately 30 minutes, plus 6 minutes to transfer the answers if you are taking the paper-based exam. It is 25% of your marks. Part 1. Multiple choice. Identify key information in 5 short dialogues and choose the correct visual. Part 2. Gap fill. Listen to a monologue and complete gaps in a page of notes. Part 3. Multiple choice. Listen to a dialogue for key information and answer 5 three option questions. Part 4. Multiple choice. Identifying the main idea, message, gist or topic in 5 short monologues or dialogues and answer 5 three option questions. In part 5. Matching. Listen to a dialogue for key information and match 5 items. Speaking consists of two parts and takes an average of 8 to 10 minutes. You will most probably do the exam in pairs. There is a chance that it will end up being a thrill, but never alone anymore. And there will be two examiners, an assessor and an interlocutor. Not only one anymore. You will need to show that you can take part in a conversation by answering and asking simple questions. It is 25% of your marks. Part 1. Interview from 3 to 4 minutes. Respond to questions giving factual or personal information. And Part 2. A 5 to 6 minute discussion. Candidates discuss likes and dislikes and give reasons. Now, what about the assessment and the grades? Every candidate will receive a separate score for each of the papers, listening, speaking, and reading and writing, in a way that the candidate can acknowledge how well he or she did in each part of the exam. These scores are summed and averaged to provide an overall result for the exam. The overall result will also provide a grade and a common European framework of reference for languages, the CFR level. There are, however, some characteristics of the speaking and written exams that you should be aware of. In the speaking exam, there are two examiners. The interlocutor, the one who speaks to you, awards you a mark for global achievement. And the assessor, the one who just listens at the back, uses three assessment criteria to give you marks, which are grammar and vocabulary, pronunciation and interactive communication. And in the writing tasks, in both texts you write, they are marked using three criteria, content, organization and language. The exam is targeted at level A2 of the CEFR, but the exam also provides reliable assessment at the level above A1 level B1, and the level below, level A1. So, if you get 140 to 150 points, you will receive a certificate certifying that you are a level above the intended exam, grade A, level B1. If your score is between 120 and 139, you are the level, and your certificate will show that you got a grade C or a grade B. On the other hand, if you get from 100 to 119 as a grade, you fail to achieve the level. 
However, you will still get a certificate attesting that you are a level below the intended exam. Scores below are also reported on your statement of results, but you will not receive the key English test certificate. Each person who sits for the exam will have a statement of results. In it, you will find the score according to the Cambridge English scale for each of the three skills, reading and writing, listening and speaking, a score on the Cambridge English scale for the overall exam, a grade for the overall exam, and the CFR level for the overall exam. Once the results are out, you will receive them online. However, your certificate will take a little longer to arrive, approximately four to six weeks after the exam for the paper-based exam, and two to three weeks after the exam for the computer-based exam, since it comes from Cambridge in England. On the other hand, you will get your statement of results much sooner, with the results grades and scales. How much is the CAT and how can I register for it? When registering for the A2 key, you have to make some decisions. You have to decide if you're taking the paper-based or the computer-based exam. And if you are taking the A2 key or the A2 key for schools. Any candidate can take this exam you don't have an age requirement and you can take it as many times as you want. If you are a student and you have already taken the starters, movers and or flyers, the next step should be the A2 key. However, this is not a rule. The only requirement is that you have done about 250 hours of studying English. In general, students who have already taken the previous exams go for the key and since these children are at school, they take the key for schools, which is mainly used by secondary school students or strong primary school students with the necessary background. Teenagers and younger children usually opt for the for schools version of the test because the vocabulary of the four schools involves the school. On the other hand, if you are an adult, the idea is that you don't actually choose an exam with school as its main theme. Therefore, you have the regular version that only differs in the topics which are more suitable for adults. Either way, check out the vocabulary list glossary in the description. Exam entries must be made through an authorized Cambridge English Examination Center. Center staff have all the latest information about the exams and can provide you with details of the entry procedures, copies of the exam regulations, exam dates, current fees, and more information about the A2 key and other Cambridge English qualifications. Let's remind you that the schedule varies depending on the type of exam you are going to take, the paper-based or the computer-based exam. They take different scheduling to be graded since they are sent to Cambridge to be assessed. Paper-based exams will take from seven to nine weeks to be sent to your applying center, while your computer-based exams will take less from five to six weeks after your exam. The price, however, doesn't vary much from the computer or the paper-based exams. When you register for the A2 key, you will need to pay a fee of around 95 pounds, but it varies depending on the currency in the center. Now, tell me in the comments, how much is the CAT in your country? Well, and you can also leave me a comment if you want more information about the A2 key or go to cambridgeenglish.org and check their website. I'll leave the link to my blog post about the A2 key in the description, providing you with more details of the exam. Also, I'll leave the links for some books for you to study in case you don't know which one to use. Okie dokie. 
Well, I hope that this content was useful for you. And if you want more content like this one, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to like and share this video so that more and more people can get this content and know about exams. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me and see you next time. Remember, knowledge is never enough. Bye-bye. To complete the, the gaps, picture story. Write a short three card. Part four, multiple choice. Part five, part four, part...